Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, what's up? Me, Jim, and you're back another reaction video. All right, uh, doing um, history of Russia. I know not that much, honestly, about the uh, history of Russia. I want to check out the oversimplified Russian Revolution videos too. Uh, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button if you want to learn about history alongside me and all of us that are already subscribed and join the Discord. Have some fun over there. Talk about history. Uh, love you to join us. Pull up a chair. The more the merrier. Let's get right into it. Uh, making sure everything's good. No technical difficulties. Let's do it, guys. Epic History TV. Original video in the top description below. Such a good channel. Thousands of years, the lands known today as Russia and Ukraine were inhabited by nomadic tribes and mysterious Bronze Age cultures. The only record they left were their graves. In the great open grasslands of the south, the steppe, they buried their chieftains beneath huge mounds called kurgans. The ancient Greek historian Herodotus called these people Scythians. Their lands were overrun by the same nomadic warriors who brought down the Roman Empire. The land was warriors. I know the Goths, I know the Huns. Brought down the Roman Empire. The Avars. Somebody can let me know down in the comments who the Avars are. If not, uh, I'll, I'll look them up myself. The land was then settled by Slavs. They shared some language and culture, but were divided into many different tribes. Vikings from Scandinavia, known in the east as Varangians, rode up Russia's long rivers on daring raids and trading expeditions. According to legend, the East Slavs asked a Varangian chief named Rurik to be their prince and unite the tribes. He accepted and made his capital at Novgorod, his dynasty, the Ruri. The coolest name for a city I've ever heard. Novgorod. Kids would rule Russia for 700 years. His people called the kids would rule his capital at Novgorod. His dynasty, the Ruri kids would rule Russia for 700 years. His people called themselves the Rus and gave their name to the land. Rurik's successor, Oleg, captured Kiev, making it the capital of a new state, Kievan Rus. Kiev, making it the capital of a new state, Kievan Rus. A century later, seeking closer ties with the Byzantine Empire to the south, Vladimir the Great adopted their religion and converted to Orthodox Christianity. He is still venerated today as the man who brought Christianity to Ukraine and Russia. Yaroslav the Wise codified laws and conquered new lands. His reign marked the golden age of Kievan Rus. It was amongst the most sophisticated and powerful states in Europe. But after Yaroslav's death, his sons fought amongst themselves. Kievan Rus disintegrated into a patchwork of feuding princedoms, just as a deadly new threat emerged from the east. The Mongols under Genghis Khan had overrun much of Asia. Now they launched a great raid across the Caucasus Mountains and defeated the Kievan princes at the Battle of the Khalkha River, but then withdrew. Fourteen years later, the Mongols returned. A gigantic army led by Batu Khan overran the land. Cities that resisted were burned, their people slaughtered. The city of Novgorod was spared because it submitted to the Mongols. So the, the key to the Mongols, well, it, they didn't have... It was their speed and, and ability to retreat and ability to set up camp really anywhere and get away fast so is it just that they were so used to a lifestyle that was perfect for invading and not conquering or did they have some other military weaponry advantage 
uh, it seems like the, the horse and just their speed. Its prince, Alexander Nevsky, then saved the city again, defeating the Teutonic Knights at the Battle of the Ice, fought above a frozen lake. He remains one of Russia's most revered heroes. The Mongols ruled the land as conquerors. Their new empire was called the Golden Horde, ruled by a Khan from his new capital at Sarai. The Rus princes were his vassals. They were forced to pay tribute or suffer devastating reprisal raids. They called their oppressors Tatars. They lived under the Tatar yoke. Alexander Nevsky's son, Daniel, founded the Grand Principality of Moscow, which quickly grew in power. Under the great Uzbek Khan, the Tatars converted to Islam. A rising power, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, defeated the Tatars at the Battle Ooh. of Pap The Tatars converted. converted to Islam. A rising power, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, defeated the Tatars at the Battle of Blue Waters and conquered Kiev. Eighteen years later, Dmitry Donskoy, Grand Prince of Moscow, also defeated the Tatars at the Great Battle of Kulikova Field. After years of infighting, the Golden Horde now began to disintegrate into rival Khanates. Constantinople, capital and last outpost of the once great Byzantine Empire, fell to the Turkish Ottoman Empire. Some hailed Moscow as the Third Rome, the seat of Orthodox Christian faith, now Rome and Constantinople. Ah, oh, interesting. I want to learn more about the Crimean War too, and didn't the Crimean War have something to do with who, like, controlled the Holy Land? I I really don't know, but um, that's interesting that they're kind of seen as, as the Byzantines fall to um, or Western, what was left of the rest Western Roman Empire, or Eastern Roman Empire fell to uh, you know, Muslim rulers. Moscow became that bastion. Okay. Fallen. Christian faith, now Rome and Constantinople had fallen. Meanwhile, the Grand Princes of Moscow continued That's to expand That's their power. That's interesting. That's a very interesting. Meanwhile, the Grand and Constantinople had fallen. Wow. Meanwhile, the Grand Princes of Moscow continued to expand their power, annexing Novgorod and forging the first Russian state. At the Ugra River, Ivan III of Moscow faced down the Tatar army and forced it to retreat. Russia had finally cast off the Tatar yoke. Under Grand Prince Vasily III, Moscow continued to grow in size and power. His son, Ivan IV, was crowned the first Tsar of Russia. He would be remembered as Ivan the Terrible. Ivan conquered Tatar lands in Kazan and Astrakhan, but was defeated in the Livonian War by Sweden and the Polish-Lithuanian What did he do to get that title? Wealth. Ivan's modernizing reforms gave way to a reign of terror and mass executions fueled by his violent paranoia. Russia was still vulnerable. Raiders from the Crimean Khanate were able to burn Moscow itself. But the next year, Russian forces routed the Tatars at Molody, just south of the city. Cossacks now lived on the open steppe, a lawless region between three warring states. They were skilled horsemen who lived freely and were often recruited by Russia and Poland to fight as mercenaries. Ivan the Terrible's own son, the Tsarevich, fell victim to one of his father's violent rages, bludgeoned to death with the royal scepter. What? The Cossack adventurer Yermak Timofeyevich led the Russian conquest of Siberia, defeating Tatars and subjugating indigenous tribes. 
In the north, Arkhangelsk was founded, for the time being Russia's only seaport linking it to Western Europe, though it was icebound in winter. Ivan the Terrible was succeeded by his son, Fyodor I, who died childless. It was the end of the Rurikid dynasty. Ivan's advisor, Boris Godunov, became Tsar. But after his sudden death, his widow and teenage son were brutally murdered, and the throne seized by an imposter claiming to be Ivan the Terrible's son. He too was soon murdered. Russia slid into anarchy, the so-called time of troubles. Rebels and foreign armies laid waste to the land, and the population was decimated by famine and plague. Polish troops occupied Moscow. Swedish troops seized Novgorod. The Russian state seemed on the verge of extinction. left us on a cliff cliffhanger that was a great video um i really have nothing to say i had nothing to contribute i i <clears throat> everything that was said in that video i pretty much learned from that video for the first time amazing series i'm so itching to get back to epic history tv um uh i do i will have to uh i i will put these in but i'm i'm restricting down to certain uh uh video series we'll do sweden we will do russia we will do rome that that is what i'm sticking with it, it's uh it, it pains me to to you know have to say no um not no but like i'll have to wait uh getting all of these um from going from not enough recommendations to so many where i can't please everyone uh, but i i'm sticking with that it started to stress me out some that's what i'm going with and i can get a epic history tv uh series in there too which makes me really happy uh, go join the Discord, subscribe, see you guys next time. Don't worry, Melkor, Light, etc. I'm getting into Swedish stuff too, alright? See you guys.